So Michelle's got a great uh, webinar planned for you today called Let's Talk, Strategies for Empowering Students to Communicate Effectively in the Workplace. Um, but before we get to her great content, I got a little bit of um, kind of housekeeping for you about the controls. If you haven't attended our webinars before, we're going to ask that you use the chat feature to introduce yourselves, which you're doing now. We're going to ask that you use it to uh, uh, share links and resources with the group. Danielle's going to be doing a lot of that as Michelle talks about different resources. She'll be posting them in that chat um, so you can link on them. And it's a good place for you to ask questions to the group. We will, however, ask that if you have questions for Michelle about the content of her webinar, that you use the Q&A to post your questions there. And that just lets us track all of the questions and make sure everything gets um, answered. All right, next slide. Uh, one of the questions people always have is, can I get a recording? Are we recording? Can I get a recording? Recording. Yes, we are recording. And in a couple of days, Danielle will sh send out a follow-up email. It's going to have links to the webinar recording. It's going to have uh, Michelle's slideshow. It's going to have a summary sheet that Michelle puts together that's going to be kind of the key points of the presentation. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's a great resource for you to share uh, with your colleagues back at your literacy program. It's going to have transcripts of the chat, the Q&A, a certificate, and some information about scholarships and pro-literacy membership. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Separate from that email, you're going to get another email with registration links for coaching sessions. And you can see the dates there on the slide. Michelle, if you'll go to the next slide. <clears throat> for those of you who haven't participated in coaching sessions, what they are is they take place about one to three weeks after the webinar. Each uh, coaching session is limited to a maximum of 12 participants. And you just sign up. Michelle is there. And it's an opportunity as you're thinking about how to apply the stuff that Michelle's going to talk about today with your students in your class or in your one-on-one -on -one setting. You're thinking about how to, how to use it. You're unsure of something. This is a great time to sign up. Go on and ask Michelle. She's there to answer questions, share a different uh, additional resources. The other people participating in the coaching sessions all kind of chip in. So um, just a great opportunity to share and and get a little more kind of targeted information for the specific students that you're working with. Next slide. Um. Scholarships, so scholarship and membership. So we know that as you're uh, attending these webinars, you're going to hear about different resources, materials, instructional materials, and uh, some of them may be from New Readers Press. If they are and they're materials that you're not familiar with but you're interested in trying out, you can apply for a scholarship. So we started this project back in the fall with 60 $1,000 scholarships. We've got maybe about 15 or 20 of those left, uh, but it's an opportunity for you to uh, kind of apply to get a classroom set of, in this case, maybe some workplace materials that you haven't tried out before, just to see if you uh, like them. Uh, there's a link there, and there'll be a link in the email uh, for you to fill out an application. We're also offering for everybody attending one of the Teacher Training Plus webinars, a free mem individual membership to Pro Literacy. And one of the reasons why you might want that is because we have a lot of resources on our education network. Now, most of those resources are free, but some of them are only available to members. Uh, one specifically is Notebook. Uh, that's our membership uh, publication, comes out three times a year and has great resources for instructors, lesson plans, things like that. Lots of stuff on workforce, workplace uh, literacy, uh, things like that. So having that uh, pro literacy membership gives you access to the archives of those uh, notebook issues and lets you go back and look for some good uh, workforce content. And then uh, the last thing I want to talk to you about is uh, some of you may be uh, subscribers or use uh, News for You. 
if you do, uh, News for You is our um, weekly newspaper published by New Readers Press. Every two years, we publish a voting guide. It's a PDF and has information about um, how elections work in the U.S. This year, we've designed uh, an additional resource for you. It's an online course for adult learners uh, called um, Election 2024 Interactive Voting Guide for Adult Learners. And there's a link there that will be on the slides. I think Danielle's probably posting that link in the chat as we speak. Uh, but it's just a really good resource for you to use uh, with students to delve into um, the election process, U.S. government in general, you know, with the election coming up in October. There's also great resource in there uh, to help students find out in for each state to help students find out if they're registered to vote and if they're not registered to vote, where they can go to get registered to vote. So I'd encourage you to, to check that out and uh, use that in your instruction. So I think that's all for me. So I'm going to turn things over to Michelle. Let her introduce herself. Todd, and hello, everyone. I am happy to be here with you today, and thank you for all of you for taking time out of your Monday afternoon to be here with me. Monday afternoon for most of you, Monday morning for some of those on the West Coast. So a little bit about me. Um, my name is Michelle Vick, and I am an instructional consultant at Texas A&M University. I work with international grad students, helping them with their speaking um, proficiency and being able to speak English well, particu particularly as they work as teaching assistants or lectures here at Texas A&M. And I have um, over 15 years of teaching English as a second language or English as a foreign language across North Africa, the Middle East, and here in Texas. And quite a number of years at this point um, in training teachers. And my connection to workplace um, development and workplace English started here in the US as I started working with internationally trained professionals. These are people who come to the US from other countries already having skills and maybe certifications or degrees that would um, qualify them for a professional job in their own country, but maybe they don't know how to begin working in that field here in the US. Maybe they lack the English language skills to do that, or they need to know how do they transfer their certifications to the US. And I've developed a course for those internationally trained professionals that helps walk them through the process, gives them some of the language that they need, some of the cultural awareness, and some of the logistics that they need to be able to find and work successfully in a job here in the US. So that's a little bit about me. Let's talk a little bit about what you can expect from today. By the end of today's webinar, you will be able to identify workplace situations that require good oral communication skills. We are focusing on oral skills today. Not, um, we're not going to be looking at the written skills element because the title of today's webinar is Let's Talk. So what, um, what oral skills and what situations will your learners um, need to be able to handle? Then you'll be able to give some examples of foundational vocabulary and expressions that are key to successful work for workplace interactions. So how, um, what language do they need to be polite, professional, courteous, and confident in the workplace? You'll be able to select online resources that are appropriate for your students' learning needs and career goals. And you'll be able to plan engaging practice activities that will help prepare your students for effective workplace communication. So those are the objectives for today. But I also want to encourage you to come to a coaching session. I've really been enjoying the coaching sessions in round one and round two and the conversations that we've had in those coaching sessions. They are a great opportunity for you to talk about your particular learning situations, the kinds of learners you have, the kinds of classes or small groups or one-on-one -on -one tutorials that you're working with. And we can talk about how to best implement the things that we're gonna learn to, in today's webinar 
customized to your specific situation. So our objectives for the coaching sessions is that by the end of these, participants would be able to differentiate between available online tools, really seeing which ones are best for in-class use or like live sessions with learners and clients, and which ones would be best to assign to students for homework. And that by the end of the session, if you're attending, you'd be able to develop a tutoring plan or a lesson plan that addresses specific student communication needs in your context. And that you would also be able to integrate some of these activities and resources and lessons that address oral communication skills for the workplace into other lessons that you're already teaching. That might be reading language art lessons or ESL le lessons or even math classes. And I have some ideas for all of those. So if that's something that you'd really like to dive more into, then please sign up for one of those coaching sessions. The first one is gonna be this Friday. And so make sure that you get signed up and come and bring your, your questions about the resources and how you might implement those. All right, so this is a quote taken from the U.S. Department of Labor. Um, one of the things that they found as they have done loads of research and surveys across the nation is that consistently one of the skills that um, is at the top of the list employers are looking for is good communication skills. So we want to make sure that our learners have those good communication skills. Communication skills set a first impression and they can often make the difference in chances for being hired in an interview, but also they can often make the difference in chances for promotions. So as after workers are already hired, those good communication skills are catching the eye of their employers and the difference in getting a promotion could come down to how good is the employee at communicating in a, across a number of situations? I would also say that good communication skills are important for well-being and for promoting good workplace relationships. We've all been in situations and in workplaces where maybe our colleagues didn't have the best communication skills and we've felt the consequences of that. And if we can equip our learners with good communication skills, then we're increasing their chances that they'll be a positive addition to workplace environment and it will improve their own well-being and the environment um, of the workplace. So today we're going to discuss some specific scenarios and some specific skills and look at how we might be able to build those skills and equip or prepare our learners for good communication. So I want you to think now and respond in the chat box. When you think about oral communication skills in the workplace or scenarios that require or situations that require good oral communication skills in the workplace, what are some things that you think about? What do you think your learners need for the workplace? So it could be something such as being able to respond well in an interview or being able to respond well to feedback. So what, what other things do you think about? Open the chat box and write some of your ideas. Yeah, workplace vocabulary. Um, that is definitely something that people need and specific to the workplace. Being able to speak clearly, yeah clearly in a way that communicates the meaning that you mean to communicate. Small talk, active listening. Oh my gosh, they're coming through so fast. I can't keep up with them all, but this is great. Responding well and brainstorming, chit chat and small talk, workplace ethics and the communication that goes around that, um, taking directions. And I would say also giving instructions and understanding instructions, asking for, for clarification, yeah, we'll take take another minute. Any like keep them coming. You guys are coming up with some great ones. Receiving feedback and criticism, communicating well with supervisors. These are good. Oh, reporting safety issues. I'm scrolling back through to see some of the past ones. That's so true. 
having confidence. I really want our, our learners to have confidence to speak, being able to greet guests, understanding like customs around different kinds of workplace communication, responding to emergencies, asking for directions. That's good. Oh yes, body tone or body English and tone, those nonverbals, understanding chains of command, creating goals, idiomatic expressions. I love these. These are great. Yeah, personal grooming and well-groomed uniform, that is a way that we present ourselves and that can be a form of nonverbal communication. Absolutely. Understanding diversity. I'm going to ask um, Judy's question about ID and password for the webinar. I'm going to ask Danielle or Maribel if one of you can respond to that. Okay, these are all really great. Team Teamwork and communication around teams is also good. So you guys have come up with a lot of things. And on my next slide, I'm going to go through some um, key workplace communication situations where we want our learners to be able to communicate well. And many of these were things that you have already put in the chat box. So knowing how to call in sick in a way that is professional, polite, courteous, um, understands chain of command. Someone talked about that. Asking for time off, asking for help, asking for a raise or a promotion. I know some of us even need to um, review what is the appropriate oral communication for that so that we know how to do it ourselves. Um, expressing disagreement, communicating with customers, giving instructions. Many people mentioned that one. Um, giving feedback, problem solving, sharing ideas, asking for clarification. I, I saw that come through several times. I was pleased to see that one come through and correcting misunderstanding. So these are some of many situations where our learners, our clients need to have um, an understanding of what does good oral communication look like in these situations. And so throughout the lesson today, we'll talk a little bit about how we can foster skills in these areas and resources um, that are available to help us with that. But I want to start out with a little video um, and I'm going to scroll in this video. Um, we're not going to watch it right from the beginning and I want you to think about what is going on in this video and what would we need to address with our learners from this video. Sounds is, sound is good, Michelle. Hi, M-I-H-U. Uh, uh, what? Y-G-T-V-K-M-W-O-Y-T. Uh, I... have no idea what you're saying. What you... I'm sorry, I keep pausing because I'm not hearing the sound. Are you all hearing the sound for the video? Yes. Okay, great. As long as you can hear it, that's all that matters. Let me, I'm going to go back um, and start it at my starting point again and play it through. Hi, M-I-H-U. Uh, what? Y-G-T-V-K-M-W-O-Y-T. Uh, I have no idea what you're saying. What you got there? Oh, I've got three burgers, fries, chocolate shake, and ice cream. Well, IMHO, that's just TMF. <laughs> I mean, OMG, eleven ninety-five. T Y. Uh, may I have a word with you for a moment, Lydia? And P. Lydia, you've got to stop speaking in text. Uh, the customers don't know what you're saying, and they've been complaining. I mean, hi, HRU. So I hope that you heard it. I paused it at the place where I wanted to go ahead and pause it. Um, and what I want to say is like, as we are working with our learners, we're probably not going to have situations that are that extreme 
where learners are, you know, really that clueless about their communication. Um, but we do need to recognize that many of our learners don't have the vocabulary to have that professional, courteous, polite, confident communication in the workplace. Many times our learners are young, and so they just haven't had that much time to develop professional vocabulary and communication. And then also many times our learners haven't had good communication modeled for them. So one of the things that we need to do is explicitly teach useful expressions and vocabulary. And I'm not talking about just for ESL or English language learners. I'm talking about for all of our learners, especially some of those GED learners that are, are you know, older teenagers, you know, and they've, they're, most of their experiences have been talking with their friends or maybe with a teacher, but they haven't had a ton of experience to pick up good professional um, ways to communicate. So, for example, we may need to teach the language or the vocabulary for calling in sick. Unfortunately, I'm not feeling well and I need to take a sick day or for asking for time off. Would it be possible for me to take some time off for like teaching those polite ways to start a request with would it be possible, would it, or could you? Those kinds of modal modals, I'm using my ESL grammar, um, but those ways that we use to introduce a polite request. Teaching them expressions for asking for help. Many people wrote about asking for help in the chat box. Could you help me with, or I need some support in this. Teaching expressions for asking for clarification, such as, could you repeat that? I want to make sure I understand it correctly instead of, huh? <laughs> okay. So as we um, look at some of the situations that I pulled from the previous slide where I had the list of all the different kinds of workplace communication situations, I pulled three of them, expressing disagreement, sharing ideas, and correcting misunderstanding. And I would love to hear from you all again in the chat box. What are some useful expressions that we can teach our students to um, communicate well in these situations? What's a useful expression that we can teach our students for expressing disagreement or for starting to share ideas or opinions or for correcting a misunderstanding? What you got? I hear you say, that's good. I appreciate your opinion, but I think also good. Yeah, it's just teaching them to express disagreement by asking some questions. I respect your ideas. That's a great um, phrase to teach our students. I interpreted that as, or for clarity, is that what you meant? or that makes me feel. These are all great. And some of this might seem like so normal and obvious to you, especially if you've been in the workplace for decades like I have, but they're not for our students. And they were. there was a point in our own lives where this was not normal. It didn't roll off of our tongues to say, I interpreted that as, for clarity, is that what you meant? Like we had to learn that ourselves and we need to take the opportunity to teach our students this as well. Okay, you may keep those coming. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, and there is a, an underappreciated communication skill that is often not taught in the classroom. However, many of you wrote it in the chat box earlier, so I was so pleased to see it, and that is listening. Not just listening for like listening comprehension, especially I know like as an ESL teacher, I teach listening comprehension skills, but I mean listening as a discourse skill, as a communication skill, that active listening. And we all had to learn what is active listening and how do I practice active listening and how do I communicate or show to someone else that I am practicing active listening. And we need to take 
opportunities to teach that to our students as well. And some of the resources that I'm going to show you today have some good um, lessons about active listening. We're not going to look specifically at those today, but they are in there. So listening is a part of, it's a discourse skill, and we want to make sure that we are teaching not just communication for certain situations, but kind of the big picture umbrella of good discourse skills. So what are some discourse skills? A big one is audience awareness, and we are going to look at a resource today for teaching audience awareness because we want our learners to realize they need to customize or tailor their communication to what their audience. We also want our learners to realize that sometimes they have to plan their communication, especially in a situation where communication might be a little difficult. They, we want them to think ahead and plan for it. We want to teach them to be specific. We're going for clarity. We don't want to be vague. We want to teach them to be aware of their tone. Someone mentioned that earlier in the chat box to use good listening skills, as we just talked about, to avoid interruptions. That's a big one. And um, sometimes I need a reminder myself. And along with that, to use appropriate turn-taking conventions. That's something that um, a lot of English language learners need to learn the vocabulary for turn-taking conventions and the cultural implications or how we do it in different cultures when we want to give a turn to someone else or take a turn in a conversation. We also want to teach that our learners to consider the importance of nonverbal communication like body language. And then a big one is we want to teach them not to fear silence, that it's okay for there to be moments of silence in a conversation or a team meeting to give space for people to think and to gather their thoughts before they speak. So, I'm going to stop and do a little just kind of comprehension check now with you guys on the next slide. And we're going to do something that is called like a waterfall or a cascade response in the Zoom chat. So what you're going to do, and let me try to communicate orally, give oral communication by giving good, clear instructions. You're going to open the Zoom chat. On the next slide, I'm going to show you a situation or a question. I want you to type your answer into the Zoom chat, but do not click on send. You're going to wait until I count down three, two, one, and then click send, and we'll all be clicking send at the same time. So open the Zoom chat, type your answer, but don't click on the send icon. When I say three, two, one, send, that's when you're going to click send. So here's the question. During a meeting with a supervisor, an employee maintains eye contact, nods, and smiles while listening to the supervisor's suggestions. Which skill is this employee showing or using? Again, type it in the chat box, but don't click send until I tell you to. All right, I'm going to count down, and when I say one, then you click it. Three, two, one, click send. Nice. All right, so I see a lot of things. I see active listening a lot, and I see body language a lot. And really, what I was going for were, the, were those nonverbals of body language, because there's eye contact and nods and smiles. But I totally see how that is also very much a sign of active listening. So great job. Great job on both of those, nonverbals and active listening. All right, we're going to do the same thing with the next slide. So same instructions. In a meeting, a colleague presents a novel idea that would be challenging to implement. The team members are not immediately sure how to respond. Which discourse skill would be useful in this situation? So type your answer, but do not click send. All 
All right, three, two, one, send. All right, I'm getting a lot of different answers here. So some people have um, asking, asking for clarifications coming through a lot. Um, also listening um, and not fearing silence. Yeah, good. And that's the one I was kind of going for was not fearing silence, being okay with taking a moment to respond. But I think asking questions that get like ask for more clarification would also be a really great one. Okay, so we're going to move into resources now. And as we go through these resources, I just want you to know that a lot of these skills um, are present in the resources. We're not going to look at all of them today, but I explore. I encourage you on your own to explore those fully in the coming days. And after you've explored them, come to a coaching session and we can talk about ways that you might use them, expand upon them, um, really make the best use of them. Um, so as we look at the resources, we're going to look at one teacher-facing resource and two student-facing resources. And we're also going to look at within those, there's one that requires a login, but they're all free. So that's the great news. The first one we're going to look at is called Soft Skills to Pay the Bills. And this is a resource that is put out by the Department of Labor um, within the U.S. government. So you should be able to see that now. And if you're looking at it right here where it says view the soft skills video series, this is actually where I pulled that video where the girl was talking in text talk from. You can also see that they have these resources in Spanish and there is a lot of additional materials for instructors to use. These are full lesson plans. And each skill, there are six, communication, enthusiasm, and attitude, teamwork, networking, problem solving, critical thinking, and professionalism. Each skill has multiple lesson plans for teaching about that skill. And each of these skills does require some um, some oral communication. So even though we're going to look at the first one, which is communication, all of them can be used to develop those workplace communication skills that our learners need. I'm going to open now the PDF that has all the lesson plans for soft skill number one, communication. And within it, you can see that it is 18 pages long and there's a good introduction that is there for you as an instructor to read. And I pulled that quote earlier from here about how employers are looking for good communication skills. Then you can go down and see that there's multiple lesson plans. So for lesson plan number one, there's a few different activities. And it tells you the time it would take to do the lesson, the materials that you need, directions, then there's always in each lesson plan a conclusion, a journaling activity, and an extension activity. So lesson plan number one is about role plays, and there are two skits that students can practice, role play one and role play two, and then some discussion questions that you can go over with your students after they've done the role play. And I just want to take this moment to emphasize strongly the importance of role plays for teaching oral communication skills. Your learners need to practice and role plays provide opportunities to practice and provide lots of vocabulary and useful expressions. We're going to scroll down now past the role plays to the second lesson plan, which is called flipping the switch. And I just want to show you one thing that I might do with this lesson plan. So you could do it exactly as it's written and it would be really helpful. But I like to get my students up and moving. So I want to talk to you about this one here and how I would do it. One of the goals of this one is for our learners to see that the way that we might communicate with a friend 
or out on the street is really different sometimes than the way we might communicate in a professional setting. And we have to change both our verbal language and our body language to fit the audience and the situation. So I would have my students get in groups of four or five and line up in a straight line, one behind the other, and this is something that I would do to visually help students see how different their language needs to be depending on the context. And I might choose, for example, this situation to asking for help. And I would have the first person in the line turn around and ask for help from the person behind them as if they're talking to a friend. And then that person would turn around and ask for help from the person behind them as if they're talking to a family member. And you could even say what kind of family member because there's a big difference between how you ask for help from your grandma and how you ask for help from your little sister. And then that person would turn around and ask for help from the next person in line as if it's a colleague at work. And then the last person would turn around and ask for help from the person behind them as if it's their boss. And this like, brings into the, the classroom space in a way that everyone can hear and visualize and witness that we really need to change our language depending on who we're talking to. It goes from levels of informality to formality, from you know casual to more professional. And it would be a fun way to get your students up and moving, practicing, but also witnessing what this looks like. And then you could sit down and have a classroom discussion after that. All right, so that's one way that I might extend upon what is already in here, but you don't have to do that because you could just simply follow all of the directions as is, and this would be a great lesson as is. And again, before I go back to my PowerPoint, I wanna point out there's 18 pages of lessons just in this one um, soft skill, and this is just one of six soft skills. So there's a wealth of resources here that you can explore. I do see that there's some questions. I'm going to pause for questions after I go through the resources, so please try to jot down your questions so you don't forget it, and we'll come back and address it. We're going to go on to the next resource, which is the Learn to Earn Toolkit. This is the one resource that I said does require a login. And so let's take a look at this Learn to Earn Toolkit. And here we are on mine. I have already logged in and you can see my dashboard. And within this, you can see that I have earned some badges, which is kind of cool. And it gives me an idea of my progress. Each of your learners, can create an account on here and then they can work through the various skills and as they do they also earn badges and those badges are very motivating so sometimes I haven't done much more with this learn to earn toolkit than assign different lessons from it to my students as homework if the lessons complement what we're learning in class and then they are earning badges and they seem very motivated to earn all their badges. But I'll also talk about two activities I might do with one of the readings. So if you go up here to skills, you can see that there are 10 skills within the Learn to Earn Toolkit. And I am going to click on the teamwork skill. There is one that is all about oral communication, um, but we're gonna look at the teamwork one. And within that, there is an introduction to teamwork. There are three lessons within each skill. There's a little bit of more of an introduction. And there's often some more resources that students can explore. They can do the lessons at the intermediate or the advanced level. And we're going to look at give and receive feedback. So in the give or receive feedback, give and receive feedback lesson, we're at the intermediate level. And you can see that there's a lot of text for the students to read. And if they put their 
cursor over the highlighted or the, the words that have yellow background, it gives them the definition of the word. And later they will be quizzed on some of this vocabulary. So within each lesson, there is a vocabulary list and they see those vocabulary words in a list with the definition and they also see those words in context. Also within each lesson, there's an idiom and the definition of that idiom to teach our students idiomatic language. There is this spin the wheel. I'm going to say like, ignore that. I don't like that the way this feature works right now. Um, it's not that useful. And then at the end, they can earn their lesson badge by taking a 10 question quiz. If I click on here, it's gonna tell me I've already earned my badge. So, um, so you won't be able to, it won't let you take the quiz again once you've earned the badge. But how I might um, expand upon this, I might assign this particular lesson as pre-reading for my class and then tell them we're gonna talk about it in the next class. I would give them a guiding question such as, what is one way that you learned or one thing you learned about receiving feedback? That's their guiding question for when they read it. When they come to class, at the beginning of class, I'm going to ask them to do a think, pair, share activity. The thinking they've already done, it's reading the article and thinking about what is one thing I learned about receiving feedback. At the beginning of class, I will pair them and ask them to share with their partner the one thing that they learned. And I'm going around and listening and assessing like, you know, how was the reading comprehension? Did it, you know, am I hearing some good things? And I might even turn that into a further discussion. And then finally, I might have them practice some role plays for giving and receiving feedback. And those role plays could be something that I have already scripted out, or if they're advanced learners, I might have them script those out themselves and create some role plays. It could be create one role play that is an example of not receiving feedback well, and then redo the replay and show how the person could change and receive that feedback well. So those are some activities I might do with this particular lesson. And again, within these skills, there is a wealth of lessons related to workplace skills, and many of them involve oral communication skills, not only the one that says oral communication. So that's resource number two. We're gonna go on to resource number three, our final resource for the day. And that comes from GCF Global, which is a Goodwill Foundation resource. They have a ton of tutorials that are student facing that address digital skills, job success for like getting a job and job success for like maintaining a job. And so we're going to look at one of those um, one of those web pages and this is the one for workplace skills. So you can see here there are a number of tutorials related to workplace skills and we're going to look at the one job success and under job success is kind of what I think is a foundational workplace communication tutorial or lesson. Now, on that previous page, there was a whole module that's about communication, but I would start here with your learners under common workplace communication. So let's take a look at this. It's a really nice web page. It's bright colors, designed really nicely. It flows really well and it's got some great information for your students. How would I use this web page? Okay, I have a couple of ideas. My first idea is that I would assign an individual or a pair of students or maybe even a small group of students one section. So for example, one pair in my classroom might have this section called what is positive communication. And another pair in my classroom might have this section called positive workplace communication. And then another pair might have this section and so on. 
tailor it to your students. How many sections you assign to one pair or one individual would be based on your students' abilities. Whenever I would do something like this with my classes, I knew which students could handle more and which students needed less. And so I personalized it in that way. But then what I would do is have them read their section and think about how they're going to teach that section to the rest of the class. So it might be as simple as putting them in groups to teach what they learned about to the others who read different sections. Or something I really liked to do was combine digital skills with um, what other, other skills I was teaching, whether it's language skills or workplace skills. And so I would teach my students to use Canva, which is a great online resource. There is a good free version of it for developing graphics like a flyer or an infographic or a poster. I would teach my students how to use Canva and then I would have them make a graphic to graphically display what they learned about what they read. So for example, for the section who read accepting constructive feedback, they might come up with a graphic that looks something like this. I created this on Canva. It took me about five to 10 minutes to create this using the um, templates that Canva already has. And I know from experience with my students, with several groups of students dating back to COVID, that most of them would be able to learn how to do this because they did. They created graphics like this um, for class. So then we could have some sort of situation where students are showing the graphic that they created to the other students and explaining it and teaching it to the others. Or if we're in a physical classroom, maybe I print these out and I put them around the walls and students go around and they look at the different graphics and the ones who made it explains to those who've come to look about what they learned. You could use poster board too. That would be fine if you're not wanting to do the digital skills part. That would be another way to do it. But that's just one of the ways, oops, that I might use this web page. One final idea on this web page. Let me go back up. If you look at this list about positive workplace communication, a quick glance shows you that this communication isn't all positive. So you're going to need to think about um, what could you do to help your students uh, discriminate between what's positive and not positive. And I think you could take this and make it into a sorting activity. If they're in the classroom, you could put it on post-it notes and have them sort between which ones are positive and which ones are negative. Or you could um, even have them create a sorting activity. So one, the pair that reads this positive workplace communication section, the way that they teach it to the rest of the class is they create a puzzle or a sorting activity for the rest of the class to do. So these are different ways to really get your students engaged with their learning and thinking about and interacting with the materials rather than just simply reading it. All right, we're gonna go back to my PowerPoint now and wrap up. So we've looked at three resources, all free, all incredibly rich with lots of information and lots of ideas. Again, I encourage you to explore those in depth. Um, they'll be in the resources that are sent out after this. But there's a few things I want you to keep in mind as you're exploring those resources and thinking about using them. One is that you know your learners best. So you know which of these resources are too advanced or which ones will be too simple or which ones are just right. You also know your learners' um, goals and their desires. You know where they're coming in with their current abilities in terms of oral communication skills. And you know their English language skills if they're English language learners. So you're the one who's best able to choose which of these would really work for your learners. You also are the ones who best know how to tailor these materials to meet their needs. You know best whether, whether or not you can just, for example, assign one of those readings that are student facing as is, or if you need to do something to make it more useful for your particular learners. 
And if you're struggling with that, this is something that we often end up talking about in the coaching sessions. So I just, again, want to encourage you, come to one of the coaching sessions. I usually start the coaching sessions by asking those who are in attendance about their learners and their situations so I can best know what kinds of um, ideas or advice to give in those situations. And then finally, do not underestimate the power of practice. Your learners need a lot of opportunities to practice these skills in role plays um, and other situations. You can weave, for example, giving and receiving feedback all throughout your lessons and over the course of your semester, whenever your courses run. Look for many opportunities to give your students practice. I recently was working with a student who was a high level basketball player in China, and now he's here um, in the US and he's struggling with some of his speaking skills. And I asked him, I said, hey, how many times did you have to shoot a free throw in order to be able to consistently make that free throw in game setting situations. And he was like, oh man, I don't know, like, you know, thousands. And I said, well, you need to give um, an, a similar dedication to practicing your speaking skills in English. You're, it's not gonna be a one-off like you read and you learn a new vocabulary word and you go the next lesson the next week and you never practice again but somehow you're able to demonstrate mastery or proficiency. It takes repeated practice. And we as teachers and tutors can try to create those conditions and set our students up for success by creating practice opportunities. Okay, we're gonna have a little bit of final housekeeping and then also I'll address some of your questions. We've got about six minutes left and I can stay late um, as well. So please put those in the Q&A. Upcoming webinars in this series, we are getting to the end of this series, but there's still three great webinars coming up in the next two and a half weeks. The most, um, the most immediate one is tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So if you haven't signed up for that yet, I encourage you to do that. It's about writing strategies for our low level writers or those who struggle with anxiety about writing. And then there's also one um, for English language learners, um, especially those pre-literate learners who need reading skills on April 9th. And then a math one about the different kinds of routines you can create in the classroom for building number sense on April 18th. And I want to make sure that I take a moment for you to scan the QR code for the survey from today's webinar. I, from the last round, read every single piece of feedback you gave, and I used that as I planned today's webinar. I really take your feedback seriously. It helps me so much. It helps us as an organization. So please go ahead and get that open and make sure you um, do that survey today before you um, close everything out today. That would, it would help us a lot. There's also a link if you'd rather just click on a link in the chat box. All right, we have some time for questions. And while you're putting your questions in the Q&A, I wanna say um, a reminder that coaching session links will go out um, very soon. Please sign up for one. Come see me on Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. And also, Todd mentioned at the beginning, the membership and scholarship opportunities. Don't miss out on those. When these resources go out today you'll in an email, you'll be able to click on any of these links within the slides to access those. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Um, some questions that we've gotten. Is the soft skill material suitable for beginning English levels? No, I don't think it is, to be honest, but um, there, a lot of it is available in Spanish if you happen to work with Spanish language learners. For those who are um, English language learners from other language backgrounds, you might need to adapt it, find ways to simplify it, and um, now the videos, I didn't check, but often with those videos and YouTube, 
you can click to change the language in the subtitles to a lot of different languages. So you may be able to use those videos, um, but you would have to look through the lesson plans themselves to see how you might be able to adapt those. I will say the role plays at the beginning, the more I'm talking, the more I'm thinking about this answer, the role plays were pretty simple. They weren't like very, very advanced. The word specific was in those role plays. So you might have to teach that word specific, but a lot of the language in the role plays were, was pretty simple. Great. All right, next question. Are there any resources for very beginning ELL students? So I did, in the follow-up resources that will go out later today, I put the link to a, a, some, an online reader that is for English language learners. And uh, the link is directly to one story that has to do with calling in sick, I think, or asking for time off. But some of the other readers, even though they're not addressing specific oral communication skills, they are addressing workplace skills. So I would encourage you to review those or, or check those out. And I don't have the link open right now, so I can't put it in the chat box, but it will come. It's, it's in the additional resources section on the email that you'll receive today. Thank you. And last question, some of the information says youth. Is there anything that is really different for adult learners? Yeah, so I think those, um, the soft skills to pay the bills, the, the, the three resources I showed you today, they are um, vetted by a lot of adult education instructors. I was a part of kind of a crowdsourcing activity that had 50 adult education instructors across the nation going through resources and vetting them to decide are they really appropriate for adult learners or do they seem childish if they have the word youth in them. Everything I've shared with you today has been vetted as there's nothing childish about it. it would, it's spot on great for an adult learner. But I think it could they could also be used for older teenagers if you're working with like older teenagers. All right, that seems to be the last question um, in the Q&A. Great, and I was gonna turn my video back on during the Q&A and I didn't, but I just want you to see my face and see me say that I'm so thankful that you've been here with me for around three today. I hope that you found it useful and I look forward to connecting with many of you in the coaching sessions to come. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you.